I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Good evening and welcome to the Ex-Mormon Files here in the heart of Salt Lake City. I'm your host, Bishop Earl. Appreciate you spending some of your time with us. Tonight we have Braden Paxson with us and we were thrilled to meet your wife last week. She did such a great job and great spirit and so we appreciate you coming and sharing your story. Thank you. As we usually do, tell us a little bit about your history and background in the church. And Well, I was, I was born in the church and uh, where were you born? I was born in Provo, Utah. However, I grew up uh, in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Oh, okay. And so I was, you know, your traditional, you know, LDS. I was baptized when I was eight, and yeah. all, you family know, family active. Parents. Yeah, family were, active. My parents were active. Um, ma married in the temple. Were yes, they? they were married in the temple. Were they? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, <clears throat> but uh, you know, I went up throughout, you know, the different levels of the Aaronic priesthood, a deacon, teacher, and, uh, and yeah, yeah well, <laughs> also an Eagle Scout. So oh, I was, yeah, yeah, good for you. <laughs> so I was your, uh, you know, traditional. Pretty much LDS through and through. Okay, and you seminary? You took seminary? Yes, I, I, I graduated from seminary. It was early morning seminary. Oh yeah. So uh, you couldn't get the release yeah. time during the day. So yeah. Yeah. At what time did that start? Uh, mine started at uh, actually 5:30. Ooh. So it, it, it was pretty. It was tough early. to get there. Yeah. Were you motivated? I mean, was that something you wanted to do? Did you feel pressure from your parents or? Um. I did I mean, have pressure a little honest, bit. Uh, it was mostly the, the, you know, guilt trip, mostly, you know. You just knew that's where you were supposed knew to be. Knew it was, you know, yeah. and uh, since I didn't have a driver's license at the time, I actually uh, um, ran to seminary every morning. Oh, it's wow. It's about three miles away. So. Good exercise. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> did you run for high school later on? I did. You? Did you? Mm -hmm. Oh, good. I've done a little running. Anyway, so you uh, busy then in the church? I mean, you just, is there any, any question in your mind that it was true? I mean, you, you believed um, it was true, I'm sure. I did. Um, really, th there was no question in my mind that it was true. Yeah. Uh, most of it was, you know, pretty much based on my parents. Yeah. You know, but even, even, up through, even up through my youth, there was really no question in my mind that it was yeah. true. Yeah, bore your testimony, did you? Yeah, that was, uh, you know, pretty much every fast and testimony meeting, I was really? up there bearing my testimony. Yeah. And so you finally, you leave high school, you finally uh, decide to go on a mission. Uh, yeah, I did. I, uh, I went to uh, South Africa. And uh, in fact, my first mission president used to be the governor of Utah. It was uh, Norm Bangader. He was the and, he was the mission president. Yeah. Oh, okay. How about so that? it was uh, 1998 to 2000. Okay. So and was that a good experience? It was. It was. A, it was a really good experience. Yeah. I I really enjoyed it. Yeah. I I spent pretty much my whole mission in black townships. So. Oh, a little different. But mm -hmm. it was after the priesthood had been restored. Yes, it was. So it was. That was a different message yeah. you were able to give. Mm -hmm. When I went on my mission, the priesthood hadn't been. Uh, restored yet. I went to Denmark, mm -hmm. so that was pretty much a white country. Mm -hmm. But uh, so did you, I, I've asked this before, and I know it sounds leading question, mm -hmm. but did you feel like you were preaching the Church of Jesus Christ, the Church, the Book of Mormon, Joseph Smith, Jesus? What were you preaching there? Well, um, the big thing, the big issue that I had was um, 
um, I kind of felt a little bit almost like a used car salesman because uh, you know when we get to the third discussion it would talk about how they had to accept that this was the one and only true church on the face of the whole earth and I had a hard time <laughs> teaching them that because in my mind I was like well I don't even know really in the back of my mind if I really believed it was the only church only true really? church <laughs> yeah you had so now the first two lessons what were they about the first two lessons were about um, the nature of of God and oh, it was. and uh, and then it was the Joseph Smith yeah, story and the Joseph was Smith that? story that was in the first discussion okay, okay and and then it would it moved on to the uh, to the second and third discussion where it moved on to the uh, to the church itself and uh, and then of course the church being the uh, you know the only true church and so that that was the biggest thing I, really I had a hard time with. <laughs> when do you bring the Book of Mormon in, or when were you in back in ninety eight two thousand? Uh, the Book of Mormon was uh, 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 traditionally it was brought in um, around the second discussion. Oh really? The okay. first was pretty much the nature of God, and then the Joseph Smith story, and then you moved into the Book of Mormon. So you didn't and the hand out the Book of Mormon in the first first lesson. All, all um, it depended. It we were always t we were always told to you know how we you know the the spirit or operate how we felt, by the spirit. Know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, usually it was uh, um, it was at least by the second discussion. Okay. So somewhere in there. Yeah, fascinating. Yeah. So you come back and you what happens in life then? Well, I, I came back to my mission, and uh, I guess the first call in I had back to my mission was a young single adult representative. Okay. In, in the ward, and and so I kind of got into the young single adult institute scene. Yeah. When I got back, and oh, I was. Uh, this is when you did the crashing of the prayer circle, or um, something. not prayer. that. That was actually a little. That's actually a little, a little bit later. Bit later. Okay. That was when I started. That's actually when I started going to school up there. I was still living in Vernal with my parents. Oh, okay. And so I would. Uh, uh, I had got a job working for, um, he actually was my young men's president at the time, driving a propane truck. Mm. And so I'd go to institute, you know, and, and deliver propane during the day. Okay. So. <clears throat> All right. So you're, but you eventually do mm -hmm. meet Sharina, of course. I do. Married. Eventually I, I went up there. I, uh, I realized that uh, I wanted to have more of a college type life. I, I felt a little bit like I was missing out on my uh, my college experience because all my other friends were going at BYU yeah. and so I decided to uh, to put in at uh, UVU and got yeah. accepted to UVU moved up there and uh, I actually uh, um, I actually didn't meet her until 2008 and this was back in 2001 oh my goodness so okay. it, it was a while <laughs> that uh, I kind of did the college thing okay and uh, but but still now back to the church no no question that the church is true and you're active in the church and uh, no not really any question whether it was true or not you yeah. know I I thought I really had a testimony you yeah. know my uh, you know my parents were you know devout and and so I really didn't really have a question yeah. at that time yeah this thing with the being the only true church mm -hmm. didn't bother you later it was one in those years well, it was it was one of those things that was kind of um, it kind of bothered you, but as the church always tells you, you kind of, uh, you know, it was one of those things you put on the shelf. You get an answer you later. You know, you get an answer later. <laughs> In the millennium or something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that was my, always what I thought too. So, okay, so what, what happens next? Well, um, so eventually I, um, I of course, um, I, I joined the military, and I actually was I actually went to Iraq in in the beginning stages in in February of 2003. Oh boy, right after the so, towers went down. Yeah, right after down. the towers went down, we were one of the first units they activated. Wow. And uh, and and so I, you know, that was you know was quite the experience. I actually never our our uh, our chaplain was LDS. And and I actually never went to a, uh, a church service when I was over there, because yeah. all my friends were, uh, you know, well, eighty percent of our un our unit was LDS, but most of them were inactive. Oh. And uh, and so I kind of hung out with the maintenance section, which uh -huh. was my section, and so I didn't really uh, go to church much while I was over there. It was after I came back from Iraq and uh, uh, came back in two thousand four, and then uh, a couple years later was when I met Sharina. Oh, okay. Well, did you feel 
I, I mean, I, I think you probably rationalized or felt like, well, this is just what, what it was when mm -hmm. I was in Iraq, but you came back and were you still active or you became active again in mm -hmm. the church? And I did. I, I went back to my student apartment complex and, and, you know, started going to school again and going to my student ward. I actually got called as the, uh, as the ward financial clerk. Oh, okay. And so I had that calling for a while before yeah. I uh, ended up uh, meeting Sharina and, yeah. and getting married. Okay, so you get married in the Portland Temple. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, had that been a goal of yours? I guess to get married in the temple, and it had it. It always been a goal to you know to get married in the temple. I believed you know it yeah. was pretty much the only place. Right. That uh, you know, and and so I I had always been looking forward to it. Yeah. Now you'd been through the temple before as a as a mm -hmm. an elder before you went to, on yeah. your mission, I guess, mm -hmm. and so you yeah. were you knew what to expect. Did yeah. you, she have any concerns or? thoughts when you went through the temple or um no she expressed to you uh, she she didn't really have any anything i know a lot of people they they you know they talk about you know being a little bit weird and i, I thought it was a little bit weird but uh, you know my my parents had been through the temple i was like well it must be uh it's true <laughs> it must and they're be doing true, it. you know so yeah. so you know it's kind of you know follow after everyone else yeah i know that feeling it's interesting so uh so what happens? You you married then in 2008, did mm -hmm. you say? Yep, and, in January okay. of 2008 we got married. Okay, and then so what happens in life? You're just busy in the church, I guess? Well, we, uh, you know, I was pretty busy in the church. Um, I started, I actually got a full-time job out at uh, the aviation facility that I was in working as a civilian okay. for the guard. And so I was working out in West Jordan. And, uh, and that was when, uh, of course, uh, when my wife was mentioning the first word we got into um, over there was when we first, uh, my wife mentioned that she had uh, a hard time getting to church at the time. Oh yeah, that's and, right. and I was continually away on annual training. We were preparing again to be deployed. Hmm. And, uh, and, so, uh, and, and so the ward just kind of, that we were in at the time, just kind of turned away from us. You know, and just kind of, uh, no one would, they were really nice in the beginning and then they just kind of, you know do you think there's just a, a feeling of well they're there and if they need us they'll come and get us mm -hmm. or do you what I mean she probably had visiting teachers or you yeah. had home teachers and stuff and well um, that is is kind of the feeling I kind of got at the time um, uh, we of course we were assigned visiting teachers and home teachers but we were never visited Oh, oh, well, <laughs> and so I know they seek for a hundred percent, and, and so they, they, uh, and, and so they were always really nice to us until you know, until we, you know, we can't make it to church, you know, and you can, and, and then it kind of seems like they uh, kind of turn the other way, and that's what she was me mentioning, yeah. you know. Uh, interesting. So. I, I, I mean, I can see where there are people that I, I didn't visit or I wasn't aware of. I don't mean as a bishop or anything, but I just mean as a ward member. And mm -hmm. you'd probably let you think, oh, I should probably say call them or say hi, but you just don't. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You're just in your own little circle yeah. of, of life, and and things get busy or hectic. Mm -hmm. Well, so what happens to kind of make you start looking at it a little differently at the church in terms of doctrine and stuff? Well, um, it, that was uh, kind of. Um, uh, happened, uh, I think that going to UVU kind of, uh, started that whole process. The first, the thir first thing that started it was when I would write my English papers, you'd always, um, uh, you know, look at both sides of the issue because you wanted to be credible. And in my philosophy classes, you'd also talk about, you know, um, you know, truth, morals, what is it? Yeah. And then I kind of, it, I kind of opened me up to, you know, people are pretty much, they get in the church, they're one-sided. And this is the way it is. So that kind of started it. And then she, uh, uh, my wife mentioned that uh, um, uh, I was taking a general ed class, a uh, oh, art history art class. class. That's right. And and we were going through um, Egyptian, uh, the Egyptian period, and they went through the uh, funerary text, and you know the the funer funerary script. And I looked at that, and and I was like, wait a minute. That's, you know, that's the same as the, uh, you right. know, as the, the facsimile in the Book yeah. of Abraham. Yeah. <laughs> had you heard or were you aware of the, the church had the papyri? Um, Did you I, know that? I had always been aware of it, but I had never, I had never looked into it. And I had never, I just assumed that, well, they had it and, 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 you know, I just assumed it all matched. 
You know, I never checked well, it. I guess, I mean, I wasn't aware of it. I was actually on my mission in 1967 when it came out. But I was not aware of it, and the church never talks about it, and it never publicizes it because it doesn't mm -hmm. have anything to do with Abraham, right? Yeah, it, it, it doesn't, actually. Um, <laughs> I looked at the, the interpretation that the Egyptologists gave of it, which was the exact same as I learned in art history. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm like, wait a minute, that's totally different. And the translations totally you know, didn't match. And, and, and the church was coming out with the essays, too. And so I was like, well, if that doesn't match, what else doesn't match? You know, oh. that's an interesting, that's a logical step, and I appreciate your critical thinking, but for some reason, a lot of people don't think this. Yeah. They don't think critically, do they? No, they, they a lot of people, they don't, and, and, and I, I have to credit that back to being in school, because they're always teaching you to, to think critically. Yeah. You, you look at a book, and you're doing a research paper on it, and you, just because someone wrote it and it looks credible doesn't mean it is. Yeah, you have to look and, at you know, both sides. You have to look and, at both sides of the issue, and, yeah. and so that opened my mind, and that's what allowed me to look critically at even our own religion. And once you start looking, it, it yeah. gets a little, <laughs> so what happens next? Well, I uh, did you share this with Sharina? I guess I didn't know. I well, I hadn't I uh, at that, the time. I hadn't I hadn't shared that with Sharina about the papyri. I, about the papyri. I you know it, it started me looking, yeah. and I really didn't share anything with her because I didn't want her to, uh, you know. And I I didn't have any you know we like she had mentioned we had talked with her sister who had left the church and I and until she had, had vocalized to me that she was having some questions I really didn't say anything. Why I did the same thing. You you just we're just like the same. We just did the same thing. I, I'm a, I was afraid to influence her, or something. What were you afraid to, to shake her faith? Or I mean, I didn't even talk to people in my ward. You know, I I just was afraid. Anyway, so eventually you do share with each other, and then what? And she's surprised you're looking, and you're surprised yeah. she's looking, and. Well, she uh, yeah she I, I I shared with her a little bit what I had found, and. Uh, and she wasn't, uh, um, she uh, wondered about if I still believe the fundamentals, and at the time I did. Sure. And, uh, and but as it got deeper in, I, I, I finally, you know, she told me to keep an open mind and, you know, and, and at least keep people on the same, you know, same, so that we're together on the same sheet of music. Yeah. And, of course, I started studying things, and, and it got actually, you know, quite a bit deeper than she was at. And, uh, but I didn't, I, I'd heard so many stories and, you know, I, I'd been on, you know, John DeLynn's website and yeah. I see so many stories of people that destroyed marriages. And in my view, my big view was that a religion, just a belief like that shouldn't destroy marriages. No, I agree. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to take a chance of yeah. shaking up your, your marriage mm -hmm. and so I guess it was a relief to find out she was at least thinking. Yeah, it, it, it was a big relief. Yeah, yeah. My my relief lasted a, a, my angst lasted for six or eight weeks. But finally, my wife started looking. Well, did you ever talk to the bishop or stake president or anybody about what you were finding? Um, I never did because I didn't believe um, in, in me. I considered myself an academic, and because I was, you know, I'm a year away from my bachelor's degree and most of the bishops and stuff don't know any more than I do in fact most of them uh, there are some bishops I remember John DeLynn putting out a, a question on Facebook and most bishops uh, didn't even know about the essays well I'm shocked at what <laughs> what I didn't you know. know you know it's just amazing what we don't know and we don't really care to know and we don't need to investigate because we already know what the truth is so we just yeah. don't think we just let the leaders do the thinking for us and we're just very happy with yeah. that. And like you said, and, and everybody we've interviewed here says that they know much more about Mormonism now <laughs> than they did while they were a Mormon. Yeah. Do you agree with that? I, 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 would, I would agree with that wholeheartedly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you'd hear, I'd hear some weird things here and there, you know, yeah. but I'd never heard, you know, I, I'd never heard about, you know, the multiple vision accounts i'd never uh, i didn't know about that you know I, I i never heard about you know you know the peep stone and so on and so forth yeah. and uh, and most most uh, you know chapel mormons i guess as they uh, uh, as as they call them uh, most of them have no clue no. about any of that right. you know so what does jesus how how does jesus uh, how is jesus different to me uh, jesus is um, 
you know, they in the LDS they always talk about he was, you know, you know, Satan's brother, you know, and yeah. uh, our older brother, our older brother, <laughs> yeah. and uh, <clears throat> I view him more as the person that uh, um, I have like a, a personal relationship with him now more than I ever did. You know, in the church they they talk about the uh, you know the, they go into the Bible. It's only a verse here or there. Yeah. And 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 once once I was saved. Uh, the Bible had a whole new meaning, and I had a whole different relationship with Jesus than I did with the LDS. You know, he's more like he's part of you now. Are you are you just amazed that this has happened to you? I mean, ten years ago, could you have even thought that this would could happen? Uh, no, you know, no. ten years I would have never even thought about that. I heard about people leaving, you know, and it was yeah. a common response. I always thought, well, someone offended them, or, or they or they're sinning you know, and they can't or, get yeah, up or their sins. Yeah, they're sinning, yeah. you know. And I found out that uh, you know through my studying, most people have gone through such an extensive studying time, yeah, you know, and and, uh, and because they don't want to just give up their faith just like that. No, it's not. <laughs> it's, we don't doing it this on a whim. We actually did look and mm -hmm. study, and and so the Bible, as you've already said, is just totally different for you, I guess. Mm -hmm. Is it? Yes, it is. I mean, it's, 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 you used to read mm -hmm. these passages that we, as missionaries, we used a few Bible passages, but never in context. Yeah, ne never in context. You're always putting in, like, you're always putting in LDS stuff, so it appeared like the Bible was, you know, prophesying of the Book of Mormon, or, yeah. you know, and and today, you look at that, and I'm like, I can't believe how I was even teaching that. You know. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> it is. And then scriptures that you probably read when you read through the New Testament, now they're there, and who put them in there? You know, yeah. I, they they weren't there when I was a Mormon mm -hmm. type thing. You know, yeah, I I remember um, we were reading one day with my wife and studying the the Bible uh, one night before we went to bed, and uh, and and she read a scripture, and she's like, I don't remember that. So she goes to get her triple combination from LDS. To check it out. Check it out. It says the same exact same words. You know, nothing was different, but it was your understanding yeah. that once the LDS. Uh, you know, blinders come off. You understand it a whole different. Yeah, you actually you know. said that you read the, you'd read the Bible in with LDS lenses. Uh -huh. Yeah, and once those come off, mm -hmm. and you start seeing, so grace. What does grace mean? Well, to me, uh, grace is is a whole different meaning. Uh, you know, the the church tries to to tell people that oh, we're saved by grace, but only after all we can do. But yeah. to me, that just negated. They cancel each other out. You just, that you means know, it's no grace. Right? You mean there's no grace there. Yeah. And and it's either grace or when once you put in your works, you're not being saved by grace. You know? Can you put in words what this <coughs> excuse me, what this all really means to you now? Well, it means that uh, um, uh, once, you know, accepting Jesus Christ and him becoming part of me, um, you know, people try to always say, well, you, that's just an excuse to sin. You yeah. know, and and what it really is is you become a changed man, and 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 from within, from right. within, yeah. and and so so you you want to do you know those good works. It's never you know a requirement for your salvation. In fact, in the Bible, if you ever read, whenever it talks about in a saving sense of the word, it says we're not saved by our own works or you know our own righteousness, and <laughs> and and you know a lot of that to me means so much more. To realize, you know, the love that Jesus Christ has. <coughs> Excuse me. I've had a bit of a cold. But don't you feel a freedom mm -hmm. and a burden lifted off your shoulders? I do. There, there's, <laughs> there's, there's a big burden, you know, in the LDS. They talk about, you know, we need to strive for perfection. And, and there's always the big thing about, uh, about you know, messing up. Or, or, and, and so we're always stressed out about, oh, no, am I going to, you know, mess up or do this now? Have I done enough? You know, have I done enough? <laughs> Um, you know, uh, my dad uh, uh, passed away uh, a few years back, and uh, I was reading his journals, and, and a common theme is that he, you know, he was like, well, you know, he's, you know, not faithful enough, or, you he know, he said that in yeah. his journal. Oh. And, 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 and it, 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 it's, it's kind of sad, short, be, yeah. always falling short, because he, he was the most faithful I've ever, faithful man I've ever known. And, and, and that's a, a recurring theme with a lot of LDS. And with me, I know that you know I've accepted uh, you know Christ and and his and I've made clean through his blood. 
And that's such a freedom. I mean, the, the peace that we have mm -hmm. with that. We don't judge now. The mm -hmm. pride is gone. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned your dad passing, and my, of course, folks have passed away by now, but don't you wish we could share with them? Mm -hmm. And I have a hope that God is gracious, which I know He is, and loving. Mm -hmm. And I know your dad probably lived his good life just because he was raised in the church, right? Well, or my was dad he was, he was, he was a church. convert from Lutheran. And, uh, but I mean, he, he thought he was faithful. Yeah, he, he was trying, mm -hmm. he was striving and a good man, mm -hmm. right? Yes, he was. He was, he was, he was very good. I, I, uh, you know, I, I miss him a lot. And there's times when I wish I could go back and I could talk to him about this because of anyone, <laughs> he was one that, uh, was open to, you know, to finding the truth. Yeah. And and I just wish I could share that with him now. You know, I guess I have to wait great. until after. Yeah, hopefully you <laughs> yeah. get a chance to do that. Well, is there anything you'd like to say to the LDS people? Well, um, <coughs> I think that uh, uh, to those who are LDS, they need to you know to to look uh, you know at at their own religion and 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 have the courage to look at the the other angles because you're so myself i was so limited being so uh you know so one-sided it, it was always the uh, you know appeal to emotion or to faith you know you need to have the warm fuzzy you know or or, or pray and uh, and it's you know people try to put it under the frame when you lead leave the church that you're going to be in darkness yeah. you know and and, and but you ha you're closer to god now you, than ever before you are it, and i've seen that with like ev everyone pretty much you know my, my uh, sister-in-law you know, I looked at her and I'm like, well, how come she's so close to God now? <laughs> and uh, and and that's 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 the biggest thing, you know, that I'd like to say is that uh, is that there's there's such a big change and such a freedom. Yeah. Well, now that you two are together, we've only got a minute left. Mm -hmm. Do you find yourself talking more about the Bible and Jesus than you ever did as a Mormon? <laughs> I do. I mean, I mean, like our scripture study was like it was. We miss it most of the time. Now you just want to feast on the Word. We, I go to Bible. You know, I go to Bible study every Wednesday, and yeah. as you know. For church, if I had to do another, you know, another hour of church, I'd be like, you know. <laughs> well, and, and we and you never talk about it. Mm -hmm. My wife and I never really talked about Jesus mm -hmm. and the Bible or anything. Mm -hmm. And now we can't not talk about it. It's just amazing. <laughs> well, Braden, the time's gone, and I apologize so much for coughing. It's been a little bit hanging on for the last couple of days, but I've sure enjoyed your sweet spirit and uh, wish you the best in your life. And I know this has only been a few months for mm -hmm. you, but once your eyes are open, they're open, right? They are. Okay, well, thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time on the Ex-Mormon Files. Good night. <laughs>